This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. News is also brought to you by Desert View Hospital. You can count on us. Welcome to News 25 here on KPVM-TV and Ace Country Radio. Today is Friday, December 30th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Well, a resident and three deputies received treatment following a home fire on Pahrump's west side. Three officers with the Nye County Sheriff's Office were treated at the scene of a structure fire this afternoon located at 4300 Retread Road. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies and auxiliary units arrived on scene to find a well-involved manufactured dwelling engulfed in flames. Additionally, there was a single wide also on fire. Crews were able to extinguish the blaze and residents were safely out of the home. The fire was well involved upon notification to the Nye County Sheriff's Office dispatch. The cause of the blaze is under the investigation of Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue at this time. All of the deputies declined to be medically transported from the scene, suffering from smoke inhalation. Well, a rider of an off-road vehicle declined medical attention after striking a parked car at a convenience store. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies and Pahrump Valley Farm Rescue were dispatched to a ATV crash that occurred this afternoon in the parking lot of Horizon Market on Simpkins and Blagg Roads. According to Nye County Sheriff's Office dispatch, the quad ran into a parked car at the convenience store. The rider was then ejected and suffered severe injuries. They were found underneath the vehicle. The rider declined to be medically transported from the scene. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies are investigating. Well, with the new year approaching quickly, here are some new laws that may affect you. J.D. Saragoza is here to explain. As we enter into 2023, here are some new laws that will be in effect starting January 1st. There are 55 new laws that take effect, and here are a few from that list. Assembly Bill 116 is a law that switches minor traffic tickets from criminal to civil. For example, a bench warrant will not be issued for not paying a basic ticket. Instead, the driver would receive a bill collector. When it comes to tobacco purchases, every clerk has to ask for a person's ID card for all tobacco purchases. A $100 civil fine can be issued if a clerk doesn't ask for your ID. AB 118 requires rear-facing car seats and booster seats. The law says children are to remain rear-facing in their car seat until they are at least two years old. Additionally, children must ride in a booster seat or harness car seat until they are at least six years old or 57 inches tall. Nevada law previously required that child passengers under age six who weigh 60 pounds or less be secured in a child restraint system. AB 42 codifies into law the right of a defendant in a domestic battery case to have a jury trial. The Nevada Supreme Court made that ruling because a conviction prohibits the defendant from possessing, owning, or having control over a firearm, a right guaranteed by the Second Amendment to the Constitution. The court ruled unconstitutional taking away such rights without a jury trial. AB 304 expands annual peace officer training on mental health issues to include crisis intervention and de-escalation. AB 358 orders that person who are incarcerated not be terminated from Medicaid, but suspended pending release from prison. It allows incarcerated persons to apply for Medicaid six months before release and orders that suspended inmates be reinstated upon release. Finally, AB 349 tightens up the rules for getting one of several old-timer license plates available from the state. Officials say many of those owners get the plates just to avoid passing smog tests on their vehicles. The bill limits use of these vehicles to 5,000 miles a year. Well, our own Rory Rossell put together 2022's top stories of the year in review. For our radio listeners, you can go onto KPVM's YouTube or Facebook page or even download local BTV to watch these videos. Should Should old acquaintance be oh, nah, 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 forgot nah, 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 and days of old lang for all It looks like their deal with Piaget has already been 
pre-negotiated. We hope to earn the trust and confidence of all the uh, front site members and trans transfer them over to Prairie Fire membership. Of Kairos, yet four days of old Days of old Days of old And here's a hand of my trusted friend and give a hand Broadhead has it up for sale through Provenza Realty for $900,000. We had our colonel leave the program in December. He decided, decided to retire um, again, and so that left us without an instructor. The Esmeralda County District Attorney's Office has charged Nye County Commissioner Leo Blundo with felony domestic battery with strangulation. Ronnie and Beverly Barker of Indianapolis were on a road trip traveling from Oregon to Arizona when they disappeared in Nevada. The Nye County Sheriff's Office has arrested Vasali Platnov and Oksana Higgins with additional charges in connection with animal abuse and neglect relating to Est Alpha Kennels here in Pahrump and in Amargosa. The trio is facing murder charges for the death of Eisenlawful's 19-day-old child in October of 2021 here in Pahrump. The Nye County Sheriff's Office report that they have arrested three individuals and have charged them with murder. Ogden and Coleman were arraigned in July, and Sanchez Lopez was seen in Pahrump Justice Court earlier this month. We'll take, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for days of old lang Days of old lang Days of old lang Unprecedented rains caused severe flash flooding across Death Valley National Park. In honor of the late Judge Kent Jasperson on Saturday morning, who passed away last week, succumbing to his longtime battle with cancer. I'm here to announce the arrest of 45-year-old Robert Tellis. He was booked in the Clark County Detention Center last night on the charge of open murder. On March 15th, the uh, Nye County Board of County Commissioners recommended to the clerk that they go to an all-paper ballot with a hand count. If you look back at the primary, 63% of the ballots were paper anyhow because they came in through the mail. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never be brought to mind? Should old, should old acquaintance correct? Because this is not a debate. What are we going to do? What are we going to do here? What are we going to do here? I just assumed we've got questions. Answer them. Stay in the room with me. I really don't want to hear what your answers are, and I. Would rather answer them on my own. No matter how bad the weather is, they are here to vote. You know, it's just amazing how people have, have hung in there through the rain because they find that how important it is to vote on election day and we're ready for them to come in. The commissioner said that they added up the points on the 20 candidates and revealed the top three. Michelle Fiore got the most votes with 116, Michael Foley 109, and Bill Carnes 102. <laughs> And never brought to mind. 
On Saturday, police received a report of a live dog at the dead animal pit on Mesquite Avenue at Pahrump Valley Disposal. Apollonio Ancento was arrested at his home. Police found another dog in very poor condition at the time of his arrest. So we were coming out, and I was like, Dad, stop dog so it, we were at a dump dude <laughs> live animals are not supposed to be at the dump on behalf of my office i'd like to present you with a proclamation recognizing the 25 years of airing uh, in our community and all that you guys have done uh, you guys have been awesome uh, to pahrump nye county and the state of nevada so thank you for what you've done Thank you so much, Rory, for that report. News 25 will return on the other side of this break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Well, police conduct an arrest after a restaurant in play reports that a counterfeit bill was presented as payment for a meal. Nye County Sheriff deputies were dispatched to the Terribles Roadhouse Casino on Pahrump Valley Boulevard on Christmas Day in reference to a bad check. According to the report, sheriff deputies spoke with an employee of the Moonshiners restaurant inside the casino, who told police that a family came in to eat lunch and tried to use a fake $100 bill to pay for the meal. After the cashier at the casino rejected the fake bill, they ended up paying with a credit card and left. Deputies made contact with the male and female suspects at their residence. The male was identified as Frank Kamen. According to the report, Kamen told deputies that he obtained the fake $100 bill from another person who bought tools from him. He said he did not immediately look at the bill during the purchase and placed it in his pocket. Deputies allege that Frank discovered that the bill was fake and took his family to the Roadhouse Casino, ordered lunch, and then proceeded to pay with the counterfeit money with the intention of passing it on to defraud the Roadhouse Casino. When the restaurant employee refused to take the fake money, described as having pink lettering and Chinese on it, the female who was with Kamen paid for the meal using her credit card. Due to the totality in circumstances, deputies placed Frank Kamen under arrest for possessing a forged bill and intent to pass off the forged counterfeit bill to defraud the Terribles Roadhouse Casino. Frank Kamen was then transported to the Nye County Detention Center. And an Amargosa man was arrested by police following a domestic dispute. On December 24th of this year, the Nye County Sheriff's Office report that they have arrested an individual by the name of Rodrigo Calhayas on one count of assault with a deadly weapon. According to the report, a deputy was dispatched to a residence in Amargosa in response to a domestic dispute. Upon arrival, the officer spoke to the reporting party who stated her neighbor came to her house crying, stating that Rodrigo was hitting her. According to the report, Rodrigo was jealous about something that happened earlier in the day and began striking the victim in the face, her body, as well as pulling her hair. While running away, Rodrigo started chasing her with a knife. While speaking to the victim, the deputy observed bruises on her face, neck, shoulder, and stomach. Rodrigo's hands had cuts on them as well. While on the scene, the deputy located the knife on the ground. Rodrigo was taken into custody for the alleged charges. And our own Mikey Ruhan says that Clark County has issued an air quality warning for those who may be sensitive to smoke if they're in Las Vegas for the New Year's Eve fireworks display. The Clark County Department of Environment and Sustainability has issued an advisory for Saturday, December 31st and Sunday, January 1st for smoke and high levels of particulates that could occur from fireworks on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. The scheduled fireworks on the Strip and anticipated neighborhood fireworks throughout Clark County 
may create smoke and particle pollution. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, people who may be most sensitive to elevated levels of particulates and ozone include individuals with respiratory problems, cardiac disease, young children, or senior citizens. Consult your physician if you have a medical condition that makes you sensitive to air quality conditions. For more information, visit ClarkCountyNV.gov. An innovative program that can be found in cities all over the country is taking off in a very big way these days. It pairs miniature horses and donkeys with children learning to read. Get ready for cuteness overload. Kid Martinez reports. There were many interesting smells in the forest. One thing third grader Maya Batija knows for sure is that great things really do come in small packages. I really liked the donkey because she was nice and reading to... An animal was fun. More and more schools and libraries nationwide are adding a mini tales reading program, in part because it's a fun way to generate excitement among children for reading and also because it works. It just encourages them to read aloud and it gives a, a positive feedback for them because they're not being criticized, they're not being corrected. They're eye to eye with the horses and so they really feel like they're listening and just like Buddy looked at me now, when that happens, oh my gosh, the child is just so excited. I felt like the donkey was listening to me. What we find is the kids who come routinely, they um, practice more in between. There was one little boy who just really could hardly read three words. And he knew the horses were coming and he was so engaged and wanted to read, he practiced every single day and he read one page and it was like a major triumph for him. And of course, it doesn't hurt that the miniatures are so adorable. It's fluffy on the ear and it's soft because it has tiny shoes and a puppet. We go to like the dollar stores and the Halloween stores and the Party City, get anything we can to put on them because they'll dress up as anything we want. On this day, dozens of kids have turned out to a local library to read to the miniature horses and donkeys. Their parents happy to make the trip. This program is really excited because he likes it and he likes to talk with the horses. They can enjoy, you know, while reading, uh, reading books and spending time with animals is really good for them, for the good motivation or something like, and uh, their enthusiasm will increase, right? Maybe a twist on the old saying is in order. You can lead a child to a book, and it's a horse that can make them read. Kim Martinez reporting. Well, good news, kids. If you've been arguing with your parents about playing video games, that story when we return. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Also brought to you by Silver State Health. Visit silverstatehealth.org or call 702-471-0420 for an appointment. News 25, local news you can count on. A recent study found children who play video games for three hours a day or more seem to have better impulse control and memory. That was compared to children who did not play video games. So what does that mean for parents? It certainly is counter to most of the information we get from elsewhere that too much video gaming or uh, encounters with um, screens is not necessarily good, which is why the American Academy of Pediatrics has placed limits on uh, kids watching screens. Dr. Michael Manos is a pediatric psychologist for Cleveland Clinic Children's. He says while the result of this study, which examined 2,000 children ages 9 and 10 years old, are encouraging, there are still a lot of factors to consider, like how the measurements were taken, and more importantly, how the results translate into the real world. He says when a child spends too much time in front of a screen, or in this case, playing video games, they are missing out on socialization. Socialization is very important for a child when it comes to developing not only social skills, but use of language and understanding feelings. So his recommendation is for parents to continue limiting screen time. Relating to screens, though it may improve brain functioning, does not necessarily mean that it enables someone to be able to relate to others effectively. I think that's the key. 
Well, the researchers of that study did note that more work needs to be done on this topic. They also plan to look further into how video games can impact a child as they mature. Well, great computer deals. Josh Osborne talks about things that can slow your computer down. Hey guys, Josh Osborne here with FromZone Great Computer Deals. It's time for another quick tutorial. Today's topic, the most common issues we see at our computer repair center and how to avoid them, part three. You think the biggest technology issue facing our customers in this day and age would be their lack of computer knowledge. That's actually not the case at all. You'd be surprised to find that 50% of the problems that we help people solve are completely avoidable regardless of a customer's computer literacy. Today's issue, too many junk programs. When you buy a new computer in the store these days, you're already at a huge disadvantage because they pre-install what we like to call bloatware. These are software programs that are not malicious in nature, but offer nothing to the customer and are usually just an attempt to make more money off of it. Examples of these programs are trial versions of security software like McAfee, like Norton, and other utilities that offer little value and are simply just constant reminders to purchase more products from a specific manufacturer. And don't get me wrong, a big reason for computers having too many junk programs is also the fault of the computer owner themselves. Browser toolbars, buggy screensavers, antivirus software that uses up all of your resources, and various other junk applications will cause your computer to run slow. We recommend folks stay away from downloading and installing these worthless programs. Stick to name brand software from companies like Microsoft, Adobe, etc. So how do we avoid these problems? Well, it's really hard to buy a computer without some form of bloatware already pre-installed. At our computer store, we pride ourselves on offering machines with a clean install of Windows. If you buy yours elsewhere, you can always bring it in to us and we'll reinstall Windows without all that bloatware for a very fair cost. This will allow your desktop or laptop to run smoothly without all those background processes that are created with junk programs. You guys still need help? Well, come on down to our store. We're located at 1190 East Highway 372, across the street from Pizza Hut, and in that same plaza as Game Corner, Arcade, and Fun Center. Or just give us a call, 775-990-8833. We're open Monday through Friday from 9 to 3. Anyway, that's it for today's lesson. I will catch you guys on the next one. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right, take a look at clouds. We have some wild weather in store for this weekend. John's going to tell us about it when he returns. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios and worldwide on the local BTV app, the app you need to resolve to add to your phone in the new year. Hey, let's check out the weather. Fernley and Fallon, 57 degrees. Are you the hot spot award winners? Congratulations. Carson City at 54 didn't feel too bad either. Tonopah, 41, you're the cool spot award winners. Narrowly, uh, almost out of the freezer zone entirely at 31 degrees for low tonight. Uh, we see Goldfield at 44, Beatty at 52. 55 out in the Amargosa and Vegas, uh, Vegas close behind at 54. Uh, Death Valley perfectly wonderful at 66 and here in the Paradise of Pahrump. One last time, 54 degrees, uh, 57. That puts us in a three-way tie with Fernley and Fallon. Hey, we're all hot spot award winners today. Congratulations, we have arrived. Winds out of the south southeast to 10 miles per hour as the sun rose this morning in all its hope and glory at 654 and set this evening at 438. It was beautiful. Uh, cloudy skies makes nice colors and a low tonight of 49 degrees is where we're heading with the winds out of the southeast to 12 miles per hour. Starting to blow a little bit. What's happening? Let's look into the rest of the week. Well, all right, New Year's Eve. 20 mile per hour winds, those are average. We can see gusts of up to 50 miles per hour. 
and uh, winds blowing uh, some rain sideways, 64% chance of rain, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. It's going to be uh, you know, quite windy and rainy. Uh, but look at this. We get a little respite on Monday, uh, a little calm before the rest of the storm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, checking in with a little, little bit of rain. Tuesday, Wednesday, a little more Thursday, Friday. It's going to be a wet week, folks, but that's all right. Keep the uh, fireworks safe and uh, come on back and see us uh, when we return in the new year. All right, back to the desk. Here's Deanna. All right, be careful if you are driving into Vegas up there at uh, Mountain Springs. There's uh, bound to be snow and ice up there. Of course, drive carefully over this holiday weekend. There is a saturation patrol happening out there. Don't drink and drive. And uh, we want to see you back here on Tuesday. Monday, our employees will be taking the holiday uh, to spend it with their families. Thanks for watching us. This is Deanna O'Donnell from all of us here at KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. We'll see you next year.